Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. In this week's video, we're gonna look at how can you configure uh, Tableau prep input filters and maybe also more importantly, why would you wanna configure these things, okay? So let's pop over to Tableau prep. Um, now, all too commonly, uh, just in my consulting world and just seeing what people are putting out there as far as questions online, I see people load all of the data from their tables into Tableau prep, and it's only after they get to, let's say, a clean step where they go to apply a filter and they say, oh, you know, region should be west or department is furniture or it should be after this date. But one of the biggest things that you can do to improve performance in Tableau prep is to limit your data at the input stage, okay? So um, the less data that Tableau prep has to load and uh, work against, the better, right? So whether that's reducing columns or reducing rows or complexity or whatever that may be. Now, the thing is, if you don't filter your data until a clean step, Tableau Prep still has to load all of that data initially and only then filter it down. Whereas like if you're connected to a database, so let's say SQL Server in this example, if you filter it at input, Tableau Prep never actually has to even load that data in the first place and then you know have to go filter it down. It filters it at input, uh, which is pretty excellent. It's gonna lead to you know huge performance benefits. So I would say, you know, in the majority of work that I do with my clients, especially when we're building complex flows with large volumes of data, uh, Tableau prep inputs uh are everything. The input filters are everything. They're uh, lifesavers for us. So quick sidebar before we really dive into it. Uh, if you check out this info button up here, it's got some information about how you could book like an office hour with me, or we've got a Tableau prep class amongst many other Tableau desktop classes. So if those are areas that you want to really uh, dig into to learn more, we'd love to be able to connect with you there. Uh, but we're also, you know, do this free YouTube thing. This is cool too. So let's dive into some different types of input filters that you can create. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just build a bunch of those and we'll see how it goes. And then I would love to hear your feedback at the end. Okay. So let me pop back first of all, um, to my input step, right? So if I go to orders, um, let's start with something like, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward, right? What if I just want to filter it down to like a specific uh, dimensional value, like region equals West. Okay. So if I wanted to do that, I suppose I could find the region field here, <laughs> uh, scroll across my columns to find it might be easier in the list view, honestly, or sorry, I should say field list. Um, but this doesn't really get you that far along. Cause even if I go to region and then hit the ellipses and then say filter, it's just going to direct me to filtering via a calculation anyways, which again is fine, but I could have just hit input filter and just started writing the calc, right? So I'll just say region equals West. Now, because I've worked with this superstore data many, many times, I know that there were a little over 10,000 rows to begin with. So this filter should cut us down to roughly a quarter of that, right? Because there are four regions. So if we pop over to our clean step and hover here now, I will see that there are 3,200 rows of data uh, in the result set, right? And you can actually see an icon here telling us there's an input filter, okay? So let's pop back there and remove that initial filter, although that was good. Uh, we'll look at some other ideas, right? So next up, let's say that you're going for like a value range, right? So let's say you're like, hey, I only want to look at orders that are at least $100, you know, forget the small potatoes, like, Okay, cool. So if we did uh, filter values here, I could say something like, hey, sales needs to be greater than or equal to $100. Okay, simple as that. So I guess Tableau Prep calls it out here in kind of a subtle way, but I, I suppose this is a good time to say a quick side note that whatever you write in an input filter needs to be able to return either true or false and Tableau preps only going to keep what comes out of that as true. So we'll do some more complex examples here in a little bit, but you know, basically, yeah, either the sales is going to be a hundred dollars or more, or it's not right. So if I hit save here, go over to clean one, let's see. So almost 4,000 rows, 3,800 rows met that criteria. And if I went and looked at my sales values now, just for the sake of completeness, let me hit the ellipses here and say, show me the detail. The lowest dollar amount that I will see is $100 on the dot. Okay. So what if I want to combine those elements? We can do that, right? So what if I want to know just West and sales that are greater than 100? 
no problem. I would say region equals west and sales is greater than or equal to 100, right? So if I hit save here, I imagine it's an even smaller subset. So pop over to clean one and see. So I'm down to 1,281 rows, right? Uh, now, sometimes if you're dealing with large enough volumes of data, <laughs> download prep may not even tell you the full row count in your clean step. Like it might say that it's sampled or sometimes it's sampled, it doesn't even tell you. It'll just be like 323,000 rows of data or whatever the cutoff is. Um, so there may be, depending on the data you're working with, you may or may not be able to do what I'm doing here in real time and saying, oh, look, the row count's 3,000, 4,000, 1,000. It's okay if not. It's nice to be able to do that for validation purposes, but it's also, it is what it is. Um, you know, if you can't see the row count until you publish it as a data source, then that makes this fact checking progress uh, process like just take a little bit longer, right? Okay. Now let's let's up the ante here a little bit. What if I want to say this region equals west and sales is one hundred? Or what if I just want to say or just any order in the east should stay, right? So I would want to say it like this. I would say or, not order date. Come on, Tableau. Be realistic here. Oh my gosh, now it's just trying to force me to do a field. Or, I guess I have to click it, so I don't, won't do that again. Uh, and I would say region equals east. Now, really important, uh, you know, if I have like multiple different clauses and multiple different ideas like this, I would probably want to, you know, wrap the first one in parentheses before the second one would process, right? So I would say, okay, you know, region equals west and sales is greater than or equal to $100 or just region equals east. So now we're up to 4,200 rows of data. I should see two regions there. So I've got east and west, and then I won't bore you with the dollar amounts, but if we looked at sales, then it should only be greater than $100 uh, when the region is, $100 or greater when the region is west. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna clear out what we've done there. So let's shift gears a little bit because we've now spoken about filtering on a dimension. We've spoken about filtering on a measure. Now let's talk about filtering on a date field. So a few different ways of doing that. Um, one of those would be, you know, if you just want to keep like a specific year, right? Uh, you, you could do that, right? So if I said, hey, just the year of my order date needs to be 2021, like something like that is an option for us, right? So if I just hit save, and go to clean one. I think there was originally four years worth of data in this data set. So now we're down to about 2,000 out of our original 10,000 rows. Um, now, you know, another option if you want to have, instead of just like 2021, what if you want to have a start date, right? So you could say, like, okay, year is greater than or equal to 2021. Or if you've got some crazy scenario, like, well, our fiscal year started on January 28th. So, like, what do we do now, right? So, yeah, there's a scenario where you could say, like, okay, hey, actually, if I want to hard code a date here, I could say, okay, order date is greater than or equal to. And then I'm going to hard code a date in hashtags like this. So, I think this data runs through 2024. So, bear with me if not. But I will say 2024 01 28. I really hope this data goes through 2024. Let's go. It does. All right. Uh, so if I pop forward to clean one now, I will see my order dates will start in um, uh, early 2024 and then run through, in this case, I think late 2024. Okay. So you could even hard code a date like that. So let me show you that one more time. So the way you do that is like pound sign year dash month dash day pound sign. That is, you know, linking a date in there probably beyond what we're going to do here. But in theory, if you created a parameter, you could even create a date parameter so that you could dynamically change this. Just hit the drop down and change it up there without having to come in here and uh, edit your calculation. So that could be kind of cool. Um, and then one other thing that I want to show that I actually just learned recently, I don't know how long this has been available, presumably a little while now, is uh, you can set up a relative date field, right? So let's say you're like, hey, I would always like to keep a rolling 12 months worth of data. So yeah, there's a scenario where you could like leverage the today function and, and you know, uh, anchor it off of that. But Tableau actually makes that even a little bit easier. So if I go to order date and right click here and say filter something that's unique to date fields is that there's an option to select 
relative dates. Okay, so shout out to Tableau Tim. If you're not following him on YouTube, if you're not uh, following him on LinkedIn, you're missing out. He's always got uh, you know great updates on the latest features that Tableau are rolling out. And so that I actually learned about this through one of his videos recently. So uh, if I go to relative dates, right, I could say something like, hey, just give me the last 12 months worth of data. And Tableau is going to show me what that range means. So I'm shooting this video in February 2025, right? So the last 12 months would be March 2024 through all of February 2025. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool too. It's kind of a nice way to be able to set that up um, if you, you know, just want the like date range to be a certain certain range like that. Okay, um, cool. So I'm just double checking. I think that's everything that I was hoping to cover here as far as input filters. Certainly there are kind of, you know, more roads that you could go down, but hopefully that those handful of examples gives you some good ideas and starting points on how to set these up. You can create multiple of them. So, you know, I've just done, kind of done one at a time, but you know, you're by no means limited. Like I could have one that says order date. I could do another one that says, Hey, you know, sales is greater than or equal to a thousand bucks. Like there's, there's no limit to the number that you can throw on a single input. So it's kind of up to you. And, and this is, in my opinion, one of the beauties of Tableau prep at this point, although it's coming Tableau desktop doesn't allow you to set unique filters per table. You'd have to use custom SQL to do that. So it's really nice that uh, Tableau Prep does uh, provide that capability natively. Um, okay, so let us know in the comments, did this work for you? Was this helpful? Has this improved uh, your processing times in Tableau Prep? Would love to hear that. If it didn't work or if you have further clarification questions, uh, also let us know that. That'd be good to know as well. So we drop videos on Tableau every single week here. So please do subscribe and follow along if you want to keep learning about Tableau. So thank you so much for being here and uh, we'll catch you in another video here soon.